Hi, welcome to R&S Academy. My name is Ram Prasad. Let me give a small brief about me. I did my master's in r and and then I worked for 25 years with various organizations involving in product development and technology innovation functions. I had five patents filed on my name. Out of my passion, I transitioned into teaching. Presently, I am into coaching GATE and IES aspirants on r and subject. I also conduct workshop on r and systems, faculty development programs, etc. for the engineering colleges. Recently, I conducted webinars for the members of ISHRE and ASHRE. Based on the response I received for the lectures on refrigeration systems, I am presenting here with a series of lectures on psychrometry, again for the benefit of the students and the professionals. I believe these lectures will also add a great value to all of you. This is the third lecture in this series of lectures on psychrometry. In this lecture, I will discuss about air washers. But let me start with one question. Are the cooling towers and air washers same? The answer is no. Then the next question is, how are they different? Let us look at that first. The typical characteristics of a cooling tower are, it operates on evaporative cooling principle, it uses water spray arrangement and the air in cooling towers will come in direct contact with the sprayed water. Let us now look at the typical characteristics of an air washer. Interestingly, they are similar to that of the cooling tower. Then, where exactly these two are differing from each other? The cooling tower delivers cooled air to be used as cooling medium, while the air washer delivers the conditioned air, which can be directly used in the air conditioning systems. Also, the cooling towers are placed outdoors or on terraces. On the other hand, the air washers are placed indoors in order to avoid the contamination of conditioned air with dust, dirt, etc. These are the images of the cooling towers. And this is the schematic of an air washer. It has a spray arm to spray the water from the top. Air will enter from one side, interacts with the sprayed water and then exits. What will be the condition of the air coming out of the air washer? Will it be cooled or heated? Will it be humidified or dehumidified? Finally, will it be adiabatically cooled? What will happen to the air once it passes through an air washer? Depending on the temperature of the sprayed water, the air washer can perform all these tasks. Means, we can have the temperature of the air increased or decreased. The specific humidity of the air can be increased or decreased. Finally, we can have the air adiabatically cooled. Let us now look at the psychrometric processes that are achievable with air washers. Let us consider the moisture at dBT is equal to 40 C and the WBT is equal to 25 C. First, we will plot this moisture on the psychrometric chart. The state point 1 denotes the moisture at 40 C dBT and 25 C WBT. We can read the dew point temperature corresponding to state point 1 as 19 degrees centigrade and let the enthalpy be H1. While keeping the state of the moisture unchanged, we will change the temperature of the spray water and then see how the condition of air at the air washer exit will be changing. In other words, we will be populating this table. Let me first explain you how the spray water temperature and the psychrometric properties of the moisture are related. Whenever the spray water temperature Ts is greater than the dry bulb temperature, 
then the exit air is heated whenever ts is less than the dry bulb temperature then the exit air is cooled finally whenever ts is equal to dbt then no change in the temperature of the moisture similarly whenever the spray water temperature is greater than dew point temperature then exit air is humidified whenever the ts is less than dew point temperature then exit air is dehumidified and whenever ts is equal to dew point temperature then no change in the specific humidity of the moisture let us start with ts is equal to 42 degree centigrade with reference to moisture properties ts is greater than dry bulb temperature hence air is heated and ts is greater than dew point temperature and hence air is humidified therefore the achievable process by the air washer is heating and humidification if we plot it on the psychrometric chart then the process 1a will be representing it the enthalpy ha is greater than h1 hence the exit air enthalpy increases let us now reduce the ts to 40 degree centigrade here ts is equal to dry bulb temperature hence no change in temperature of the air and ts is greater than dew point temperature hence the air is humidified therefore the achievable process by the air washer is humidification alone and if we plot it on the psychrometric chart then the process 1b will be representing it the enthalpy hb is greater than h1 hence exit air enthalpy increases let us now supply the spray water temperature at 35 degree centigrade here ts is less than dbt hence the air is cooled and ts is greater than dew point temperature hence the air is humidified therefore the achievable process by the air washer is cooling and humidification but please note that the ts is greater than wbt here if we plot it on the psychrometric chart then process 1c represents it the enthalpy hc is greater than h1 and hence exit air enthalpy increases let us now make the spray water temperature to be 25 degree centigrade here ts is less than the dry bulb temperature hence air is cooled and ts is greater than dew point temperature hence the air is humidified therefore the achievable process by the air washer is cooling and humidification but please note that in this case ts is equal to wet bulb temperature if we plot it on the psychrometric chart then process 1d will be representing it the enthalpy hd is equal to h1 hence exit air enthalpy remains constant during this process let us now supply the spray water at 22 degree centigrade here ts is less than the dry bulb temperature hence air is cooled and ts is greater than the dew point temperature hence air is humidified therefore the achievable process by the air washer is cooling and humidification but please note that the spray water temperature ts is less than wet bulb temperature here if we plot it on the psychrometric chart then process 1e will be representing it the enthalpy he is less than h1 hence exit air enthalpy decreases in this case let me explain an interesting perspective here in these three cases the air is undergoing cooling and humidification process only but the enthalpy of the exit air is increasing for the first one remaining constant for the second and decreasing for the third case what could be the reason behind this phenomena 
This is due to the relationship between the spray water temperature and the WBT of the moisture. Whenever the TS is greater than WBT, then exit air enthalpy is increased. Whenever TS is less than WBT, then exit air enthalpy is decreased. And finally, whenever TS is equal to WBT, then no change in moisture enthalpy. Let us now supply the spray water at 19 degree centigrade. Here, the TS is less than the dry bulb temperature, hence air is cooled. And TS is equal to dew point temperature, hence no change in specific humidity of the air. Therefore, the achievable process by the air washer is just cooling. If we plot it on psychrometric chart, then process 1F will be representing it. The enthalpy HF is less than H1, hence the exit air enthalpy decreases. The enthalpy HF is less than H1, hence the exit air enthalpy decreases. Let us now supply the spray water at 15 degree centigrade. Here, TS is less than dry bulb temperature, hence air is cooled. And TS is less than the dew point temperature also, hence air is dehumidified. Therefore, the achievable process by the air washer is cooling and dehumidification. If we plot it on the psychrometric chart, then the process 1G will be representing it. The enthalpy Hg is less than H1, hence the exit air enthalpy decreases. These are the various processes that are achievable with air washers. Let us now look at the requirements of conditioning the spray water before recirculating it. During these three processes, the enthalpy of the exit air is increasing. That means the air is picking up heat energy from the spray water. Therefore, whenever the enthalpy of the exit air increases, then the water must be heated externally before spraying. Hence, heating the spray water externally is the conditioning required for these three cases. In the next case, the enthalpy is remaining constant. Hence, the water will simply be recirculated in this case. This is what we are doing with the evaporative air coolers at our homes. Next, during these three processes, the enthalpy of the exit air is decreasing. That means the air is giving up heat energy to the spray water. Therefore, whenever the enthalpy of the exit air decreases, then the water must be cooled externally before spraying. Hence, cooling the spray Spray water externally is the conditioning required for these three cases. With this, this lecture is completed. In case you have any questions, doubts, queries, etc., please feel free to write to me. The next topic is applied psychrometry. It has two parts and we will discuss the first part in the next lecture. See you then. Thank you very much.